Imagine a world of fun larger than Disneyland. With so much fun and excitement, there's something for everyone. Imagine a place with thrilling new rides like Ninja, the black belt of roller coasters, plus a new Batman fireworks and laser show every night, and your favorite Looney Tunes characters, shopping and lots of food. Now imagine it all right around the corner from home. Come on out this summer. Six Flags over Georgia, the world of fun, not a world away. So it's day seven. We only have today and then Monday and the Tuesdays to drive home after the trip. But uh, today we're going to Six Flags over Georgia. We didn't do Lake Winnie last night because like it was raining and yeah, it was already like later by the time we did Rock City. So we just like picked a hotel that was like in between there and Six Flags. And yeah, we're gonna try to get to Six Flags right at opening. So actually, if you get there a half an hour early, they do open the front of the park early. So we're gonna actually get there at 10.30, even though the park officially opens at 11. But yeah, we're looking forward to checking out Monster Mansion a lot. And there's a lot of great coasters there. And yeah, I mean, that and Dollywood were like the main parks of the trip, so. We did really like Anarchista there too. I mean, I guess you can call that a theme park. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna probably be there until later, and then we're gonna head over to uh, Helen, Georgia, and start making our way back north. So this will be the furthest south of the trip, and then we have uh, a bunch of stuff planned for Monday too. We're gonna be doing stuff in North Carolina. And the Blue Ridge Mountains, so that'll probably be fun too. All right, so we stopped at the Big Chicken. We had to while we're down here near Atlanta. That's pretty much on the way down to Six Flags, so. But yeah, this is been here since the 60s pretty crazy it was originally built for a, um, a chicken chain from the 60s called Johnny Rubs or something and then uh, they turned this into a KFC in the 70s I think or maybe late 60s I'm not positive but yeah I think the original restaurant was here in the 50s and then they built they built this for that restaurant in like 66 and then uh yeah it eventually became a kfc and they preserved it since then which is awesome it's really cool the way the eye the eyes and the beak moves it does have like a very um, mid-century modern look about it
All right, so now we're gonna make our way down to Six Flags Over Georgia. All right, so we're parked. Parking is $35 here, so just keep that in mind. But I think that's pretty much all the Six Flags parks now. I think it's 35 everywhere. But yeah, like this uh, Schwarzkopf, the Green Coast of the Mindbender, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, there's this roller coaster documentary from the early 80s with Matt Dillon in it, and they have that in it. And, um, and the Great American Screen Machine, two of the coasters here were in that, so. Yeah, I love that uh, documentary, so I'm looking forward to riding those. This is supposed to be the best Schwarzkopf coaster. There it goes, testing. And then over here is Batman the Ride. B&M from the 90s. Now, I do know they recently switched out the trains on Mindbender and a lot of people were saying it's a little bit slower than it used to be, but it goes into this double loop thing here. That loop looks a lot like the Super Duper Looper one. But yeah, it has a nice layout. Wonderland of excitement, enchantment, and adventure. It's Six Flags over Georgia. Sights and sounds of this magnificent family fun land are delighting. 82 feet over the park in the sky lift, the soaring panorama is breathtaking. Visible to the east on Interstate Highway 20 is dynamic Atlanta. And just below, 276 acres packed with rides, shows, and attractions. It's the second day of the summer like celebration thing, so they got the Dollywood-esque uh, umbrellas up here. Yeah, first impressions, the entrance area is pretty nice. I think Twisted Cyclone's over to the right, so we should go over there first. All right, we're gonna see if Twisted Cyclone's running yet. Get on that at first, I guess. All right, we just did Twisted Cyclone. What'd you think? I definitely like like lightning rod. Yeah, lightning rod and wild castle. Yeah, it's probably my least favorite RMC, but that's I mean all RMCs are good, so. 
Yeah, it's really like snappy like and smooth, but the restraints are way too tight, so like the airtime sections don't really do anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's another problem with it. Like most RMCs have those like handlebar things that you grab, which like, I mean, I usually don't like to like put my arms up on RMCs just cause like you're just constantly doing inversions and stuff. Like, I don't know, but uh, definitely a good coaster. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just not my favorite RMC out of the four that I've done now. But yeah, a good one. All right, I guess we're gonna figure out where Monster Mansion is and hopefully that'll be open now. Yeah. <laughs> There's the drop tower. I don't, I'm not like a big fan of drop towers to be honest. I like them, It's like, you know, it, what, the last like, ten, not even 10 seconds, like, I don't know. I just never. Yeah, because those are like shot towers and drop towers. They like shoot you up and drop you. And yeah, right now is the Summer Vibes Festival. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that entails, like, other than decorations and maybe some food stuff. I don't know. But yeah, this mine train is supposed to be really unique. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce this. Dollar Nega. Oh, yeah. Dollar Nega mine train. So we're gonna do this. Passenger cars on the Dahlonega train ride simulate mining cars. But the old cars never provided a ride like this one. The first gold rush in the United States began in Dahlonega, Georgia, and the United States Mint was once there. The saying, there's gold in them bar hills, originated in old Dahlonega. But a new saying is beginning at Six Flags. It's there's fun in them bar hills. All right, so we just did a, what is it? Dal Dalanega mine train. Uh, yeah, it's not the worst mine train in the world. Not the best either. Pretty much mid. Pretty long layout though, and three lift hills. And the ending is, is probably the best part, but yeah. All right, here it is, Monster Mansion. This is what we came here for, basically. <laughs> uh, can't wait to check it out. This is supposed to be one of the best dark rides outside of Florida, so. All right. Now this is the original, this uses the original ride system from 1967 when the park opened. This actually was a Sid and Marty Croft designed uh, dark ride theme to the um, Uncle Remus stuff. And a lot of people compare it to, like a lot of people claim that Splash Mountain was, you know, based on the original ride. Unlike the actors in the Crystal Pistol, the characters in the Tales of the Okie Pinoki ride are animations that tell a fanciful story of Mr. Bear, Mr. Fox, and Mr. Rabbit. Just a few of the frolicsome animals living on the riverbanks. Guests ride through the darkened tunnel, and the motorized and transistorized animals dance and cavort to the delight of guests. The activity is accompanied by music especially composed for this ride. And then. In 1981, I think 1980, like there was a fire in here with the original ride, and then I guess they rebuilt the, the entire like in interior part of it. But the actual ride system is the original one from 1967. I'm sure the boats have been, you know, like renewed, replaced since then. But you know, the the actual like water way and all that is original. And yeah, I mean, it's very high production. Like, I think just, it was either last year or 2022, they refurbished a lot of the animatronics and stuff. So everything is like currently working and, and apparently they got walk around characters now. So I don't know, maybe we'll see them later. 
All right, here we go.
really good. What'd you guys think? I liked it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was pretty crazy. Like, there's a ton of animatronics in there. Like, I couldn't even, like, film them all, like, in one ride through. Because there's, like, animatronics on both sides. Yeah, it's very unique and, um, yeah, very, like, Disney-esque, right? And, yeah, they still play, like, the original soundtrack from 1981. And it's very classic, as well as being very high production and modern. Yeah. Well, do you want to do it again while there's no line? <laughs> or do you? Yeah, I mean, there's no line, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it, the most impressive thing about it is just how many animatronics there are in there. There must be over a hundred. Yeah, that's a ton of upkeep. I mean, it's crazy to have a ride like that at a Six Flags park, you know? It like feel, feels like it should be at like at Universal or Disney or something, right? Yeah. All right, I guess this is like a DC themed land here, DC. It's kind of weird that they have a Joker themed ride here and then there is a Gotham City section. So you would think that that would be there, but. Yeah, we're gonna do the Joker Funhouse coaster. This is a family coaster. I'm not sure who, who uh, made this one, but. Yeah, it looks like the, the outside is pretty well themed. Yeah, I like the theming and everything and the way they have it like um, going around this building and everything. All right, we just did the Joker coaster, uh, like probably one of the shortest layout single lap family. I mean, they could do two laps on that, right? Yeah, and there's not really much theming. Yeah, you expect there to be theming because they, I mean, the outside looks pretty cool, but you would think that when it goes through the building, they'd have some theming inside the building or something. All he would really need is like day glow, paint, and like some black lights or something, and that would like really improve it. But yeah, I mean, that's a coaster off the list here. I think we're gonna be able to get most of them done. There's really not that many people here, and it's already like 1130, I think, so. And we'll definitely come back and do Monster Mansion again later. There's, I don't know what her name is, but yeah, it's from, she's from Monster Mansion. You want to get a picture? No? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to try to do all of the other coasters near the front of the park now. It's kind of hard to, do, to vlog at Six Flags Parks because they're constantly blasting copyrighted music. All right, Goliath, looking forward to this. This is supposed to be one of the best B&M hypers, so... It's a really cool station. All right, we just did Goliath. Yeah, I thought it was pretty decent. Um, you know, a lot of floaty airtime, not super forceful, but yeah, it was a little rattly in certain spots, but uh, not, I'd say Nitro is my favorite, still my favorite hyper 
And, uh, but I would say this edges out like Pandemonium and Hershey and stuff like that. It does have that floatiness about it that Pandemonium has, yeah. But yeah, there's a really cool part where you go over the water. But my only complaint with it is the uh, the trim. There's like a trim break uh, right after that part that slows it down a little bit. But yeah, I guess that kind of adds to the floatiness of the uh, smaller airtime hills near the end. So yeah, I do like the floatiness aspect of it. But yeah, uh, uh, still a really good uh, B&M Hyper, I'd say. I think we're gonna take a miss on Daredevil Dive. Like, I don't like these vertical lifts and it's like raining, so like it'd be like <laughs> going right in your face. But yeah, we're gonna go here to Gotham City and do uh, the Mindbender and ba uh, Batman the Ride. I have been on the Batman the Ride at uh, Great Adventure and it's pretty much the same layout. They, they built like a bunch of those at all the Six Flags parks in the 90s and they're all the same layout. Yeah, Batman the Ride. It's like a B&M uh, invert. Yeah, it's like, you know, Great Bear B&M invert type. Oh yeah, they got this too. I forgot about this. Uh, Daredevil. Uh, what is it? I forget. Yeah, it's like a racing. Or Kid Flash. Why wow, I say Dare that last one's Daredevil. This is Kid Flash. Racing coaster. Cosmic coaster. And then Poison Ivy Toxic Spin, whatever that is. Oh, that's like a flat rod. They got like a DC super villain swing themed ride. Who remembers back in the 90s when they did the Batman stunt shows at the Six Flags parks? That was awesome. They need to bring that back. All right, we're going to probably uh, do the mind bender here in a little bit. I know that they uh, switched the trains out on this recently, so I won't get to experience it in its original form, but yeah. This is supposed to be one of the best Schwarzkopf coasters. Oh, that's the short cycle. All right, well, it looks like I'm unfortunately gonna have to probably take a miss on Mindbender today because it is down and they just keep running test trains. So I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I mean, I, I was looking forward to that one because uh, I love that documentary with Matt Dillon where he's where they got that ride and the Great American Scream Machine. So hopefully we'll get to at least do that later. And then this was uh, down a little bit earlier. I don't really care about it. It's like a single rail junior coaster, racing coaster. It's not really anything that interests me that much. We're kind of limited on time today, so we're gonna try to go over to the other side of the park and do uh, Justice League and the wooden coaster and whatever else is over there. family getaway the big entertainment news is six flags over georgia from coast to coast families are discovering the rides and shows that only six flags offers like the magic of warner brothers movie and tv characters brought to life and the best news is that six flags over georgia is so close by in 97 it's batman the ride the ultimate ride experience imagine the air below the sky above as you fly through the air you are batman located in the new gotham city Batman the Ride, answer the call this spring. It's a huge addition to Six Flags' arsenal of thrill rides, the Big Six, the six coasters of Six Flags. There's water rides, family rides, and shows and concerts, and fun for the kids. There's something for everyone. And for unequaled entertainment value, a Six Flags season pass is the perfect choice. Call 1-800-609-8522 and order your Six Flags Over Georgia season pass for just $44.95. You'll get unlimited visits all season long. I don't know if this is for the the summer thing or pride month or what but they got like a rainbow tunnel 
So yeah, another ride that I don't mind taking a miss on is Georgia Scorcher, because yeah, I mean it is a stand-up coaster. Don't really want to do that one. I don't really like these stand-up and, and uh, flying coasters and stuff. They should just take switch the trains out and turn this into a B&M floorless like they did with uh, Mantis at Cedar Point. It would make it a better ride, more enjoyable and stuff. I just don't think stand-up coasters are comfortable or enjoyable, so yeah, I just don't really feel like doing it, so. To find the early days of its statehood when Georgia was one of the original 13 colonies is the Log Jamboree. Guests float through the flume in fiberglass logs and lifts carry them up 50 feet. Then the logs glide down at angles up to 45 degrees. Oh, we're gonna do the Log Jamboree, but it looks like it's down, so we're not doing that one. Here's one of the sections where uh, Goliath comes over the pathways and stuff. I did like Gol Goliath a lot. I'm probably gonna say that's that's probably the best coaster here. I mean, I'm not doing all of them, so I can't compare it to all of them, but I'm willing to bet it is the best one. I did like Twisted Cyclone too, but. Two trains ply the narrow gauge rails that encircle the huge park. These steam-powered replicas of the Texas and General, the two trains of the historic Great Locomotive Chase, take passengers on a mile-long jaunt. Like all other rides, shows, and attractions at Six Flags, the incomparable Kraft Puppet Theater production is included in the one-price ticket that entitles the guests to ride all the rides, see all the shows, and visit all the attractions as often as they wish. We're gonna get on the train ride here. I'm not sure if there's only one or state one station or two, but I'm kind of hoping that there is another one so that we don't have to walk to the other other end of the park because that's where we were headed anyway. Yeah, I didn't even know they had a train here, so this is a surprise here. Well, it's a pretty, it's like a pretty big one. Like the seats are really wide and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the original attractions from the 60s. It looks pretty old. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
Mexico's a great I, I want to do that then. Wooden one, yeah. I forgot about this one too. I don't think that's open. Man, they got a lot of clothes stuff. I used to be a Wildwood. That looks scary. Bamboo.
sucky around the whole park. So yeah, we noticed on the train ride, there were rides that are completely closed, like the River Rapids is drained out, but there's still people walking up there. Why don't they have it closed off at the entrance? That's kind of strange. And yeah, there's a lot of rides closed. It's just weird, because like, first of all, the log flume was running, but they weren't letting people on it. <laughs> The mine bender, like they were, they ran probably like 30 test trains earlier while they we were, were still waiting. Running test trains while we were on the train. And there's a bunch of flat rides that are closed. Like, why is this park like this? I've heard other people say that it's like this too. I don't know. I just don't get it. Like, why? Why do they have so many issues here? And like, why wouldn't you close off the entrance so that people don't walk all the way down there and realize that it's closed? Representing the French flag and influence on Georgia is Jean Ribot's riverboat. Guests who ride the long boats experience through animations representations of life in the 1500s. Narration by collegiate captains add to the ride's enjoyment. A huge castle centers the area of the park devoted to the era of the Spanish flag. Inside the Castillo de Soto, many adventurers await the guests. Sometimes, college students perform as outlaws or lawmen and have realistic gunfights while awestruck visitors witness the activity. In one portion of the castle is a dark recess of rooms and passageways named the Casa Loco or Crazy House. The climax is an unusual slide where Six Flags hosts and hostesses provide a reassuring hand for guests. Typical of the 1,500 member host and hostess staff, these Spanish soldiers come from colleges and universities throughout the South. So here's like a steampunk themed area. They got like this ride pandemonium over here, like a really big like uh, pendulum style ride. And then this leads into the back section of the park with the other coasters. They do try a little bit here, like a lot more than the other Six Flags parks. I mean, I felt like um, Great Escape had good theming, but they do try a little bit here. And having like the dark rides improves this park a lot too. So. They do have a um, Skyflyer ride, Sky Screamer. Those really like scare me. <laughs> and then yeah, Blue Hawks closed, which is disappointing because I remember they used to have this at uh, Hunts Pier in Wildwood. This is that's where it originally was, and they moved it here. So I was gonna do that, but that's closed down. And I don't know if Great American Screen Machines. Oh, yeah, it is running. I see the train going. At least that's running. But yeah, Blue Hawk's not running. What's the fun of the ride? Yeah, that's. That's the thing about this park. I've heard other people complain about that too. You come here and like half the rides aren't running. I, really like this. I don't know, but that's probably why the admission's so cheap here, right? <laughs> 40 bucks. I mean, that's less than half of Dollywood. It's literally, it wants to be knock off Dollywood. Yeah. Yeah, they try to like copy a lot of the... Mm -hmm. And they do have a lot of coasters here, but it's like if half of them aren't running, then... Not even half Yeah. And it is like a nice park. It's like landscaped well and like laid out well. It's like better than most Six Flags parks. Like it's not... Like a lot of Six Flags parks, they're like just a bunch of rides plopped out on a flat piece of land. Like, and it looks like you're in like a big parking lot full of coasters, at least. There's like, I don't know, like a landscape type of feel here and not as flat. Maybe we could do that uh, Cars ride later. Looks like the screen machine is a walk on, so we'll do that then. Well, we're gonna do the dark ride now, I guess, right? Is the dark ride running? I hope so. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the Justice League Battle for Metropolis. I actually haven't done any of these yet, so. Yeah, this is a new one for me. The only other dark ride here. 
I don't know when they built these. I don't know why they just they just made them all the same. Like there's like four other ones. Good luck out there, reserve team. We're counting. Side. Even with the help of the reserve team, we'll make your hacking skills to get through the security and life support gates and deactivate the kryptonite force field. No problem, Superman. With the help of the reserve team, we'll bust through those leg spots and any surprises the Joker has in store for us and make our way to Lex. Okay. We better get back to training the recruits. I'm going to try to locate that. For all of you volunteers. Thank you. Thanks, Superman. We'll see you out there. Okay, everyone. Take a look at this map. Here are the locations in Metropolis where the Joker and Luther are likely to attack. Metropolis City Hall. Star Labs. Centennial Park. And here is Let's Grow Headquarters, where we believe they're holding Supergirl, The Flash, Green Lantern, and now Wonder Woman. Our mission is to get inside, free the lead members, then capture Luther and the children. Okay, team. This plan is going to I knew it. I knew she would win. Yes. Yes. 
You always win. Oh my god. <laughs> So what did you guys think? That was way better than I expected, right? I didn't know there was so much like physical sets and like animatronics and stuff. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be all screens, you know. But yeah, there are supposed to be 3D glasses. I guess they maybe they don't do that anymore. But you could tell like the screen, the way this. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, the best thing to compare that to would be, like, Spider-Man, like, Adventures of Spider-Man at Universal. I mean, which is obviously better, but, yeah, it's pretty close to that. And it has, like, the added element of being an interactive ride. So, yeah. Yeah, she always wins every every shooting ride. It said Trin was in the top 10% too. Well, I'm always trying to film, so you gotta give me some handicap on that. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, true. All right, well, uh, I guess we're going to go get on the screen machine, right? All right, we were going to re-ride uh, Justice League, but then it broke down, and then a big line built up behind it. I don't know. I'm noticing that the operations are really messed up here. Like, rides are constantly going down. Like, I don't know what's, what's up with this place, but, yeah, we did do... Uh, Great American Scream Machine, and that was really good. And so at least I got to do one of the two Matt Dillon rides. I'll show you a clip of what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> Our search for the wildest rides brings us across America to Six Flags Over Georgia and the Great American Scream Machine, a roller coaster almost built for night riding. It's got style, grace. It travels at the speed of 57 miles per hour and stands 87 feet high. The ride lasts for just over two minutes, but what a ride that is. I mean, roller coasters are scary enough in broad daylight, but when it's so dark that you can't see what's lurking around the next twist in the tracks, who knows? Here in the British section is the Hanson Car Ride, another motorized excursion. In 1917, the Hanson 6 was produced in Atlanta, thus the inspiration for this distinctive ride. But yeah, uh, I don't understand why the rides go down so much here. I've never seen a park with rides that just are constantly going down like this. I get like one or two rides. But yeah, all rides <laughs> it's like half the rides go down. Not even half, most of the rides. <laughs> yeah. That mine train is really weird. It's got like three lift hills and it pretty much stays pretty low to the ground most of the time. But yeah, there's a cool section near the end over there where it goes under a tunnel. It's a pretty decent drop at the end. But yeah, besides even just the fact the rides go down all the time here, it's really, there's some like really strange quirks at this park, like the fact that you can't put down your own lap bars. You gotta like wait for the ride ops to put your lap bars down and every single coaster we got on, they put it way too tight. So any, any like airtime you would get on any of the coasters here, you don't get it because they push the lap bar down as far as it'll, tight as it'll go. But yeah, I think we lucked out with like crowds. There's really not a lot of people here today. So we did get a lot done in the few hours that we were here. And yeah, we mainly came for Monster Mansion, which we're gonna go do again now. And that didn't disappoint. And I liked uh, Goliath and Twisted Cyclone a lot. So I would say, yeah, it's a it's a park worth coming to. It's just like got a lot of like strange quirks that aren't really like good quirks or <laughs> things that are 
And yeah, I mean, everything just seems really like disorganized. And like when we got on that mine train, like the gates closed and then like the one ride up was like, you can't reopen the gates. And she's like arguing with him. Yeah, that's why. She's like arguing yeah. with him about it and stuff. And like, it's like, I guess they couldn't run the coaster or something. It kind of seems like the ride ops don't know what the hell they're doing. And then, like, yeah. Well, okay, I do agree with the lady. I think she got annoyed because then her like employee was just like, "Oh, come on in anyway." Yeah, yeah, but it seems like maybe they weren't supposed to open the gates again, like for safety reasons, but they did it anyway. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of odd. And yeah, like the, this, the rides going down nonstop is really strange. The fact that they don't have the entrance is closed off for rides that are not operating like the 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 rapids over there is drained and you just got a constant stream of people going in there trying to get on it and it's not there's not even water and it's like why wouldn't you put a thing at the entrance to keep people from walking all the way back there and having to turn around and the log rooms are just running like and yeah the log flume yeah standing there, and they're just standing there. yeah it's running but they're not letting people on it it's just some really bizarre stuff going on it's not like I didn't expect that though because I watched I've watched other people's vlogs here and they're always saying about how the rides are going down here and that like a lot of times they'll only run one train which I don't think that was a problem like they were operating like two trains on all the coasters but like and there's barely here. yeah there's barely even anybody here so. I'd say it's be better if all the things weren't down. It's one of the better Six Flags parks. Like a lot of Six Flags parks are bad. Like so you kind of like expect it coming to one. All right, we're going to re-ride Monster Mansion and then head out. I'll do another POV. We got like Scooby Doo playing on. That's some Scooby Doo shit. Y'all got you this fall ass child. Woke me up with the Scooby Doo shit.
This here cannon. Was our second re-ride on Monster Mansion. That was our third. No, re-ride. Second oh. re-ride, yeah. Yeah, it really is a fantastic dark ride, right? I like the... Oh, it looks like he's flashing you or whatever? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't... It, it feels like it belongs at a like a bigger theme park. Like, I mean, why doesn't Dollywood have a big scale dark ride like that? Or, well, they do have Blazing Fury, and like this reminds kind of a dark ride hybrid coaster thing. But, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm happy with what we did get done here. Uh, I do wish that a couple of the rides were running. Like, uh, I wanted to do Mindbender, but. It is what it is. I mean, I guess that's what you expect coming here. Everybody knows that the rides go down a lot, so. 
But yeah, uh, if you just want to come here for a few hours and do the dark rides, I would say it's worth the cost of admission just for, if you're a dark ride fanatic, like Monster Mansion is one of the best uh, class. It's, I wouldn't really even call it a class. I mean, it is a classic ride because it's old, but like it's a modern style dark ride. And it's like very rare to ever see something like that outside of a huge theme park like Disney or Universal or something. No. Billy Bob. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we did get to see the girl, whatever her, whatever her name is. I'm gonna call her like Madam Monster. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't. Know. Yeah, it's probably that something like that. So yeah, it is almost three o'clock, and there's still like hardly anyone here. So maybe Sundays are a good time to come to this park, or maybe it's just like. The time of month because it's like yeah yeah Sundays, probably a lot of people are in a church, church yeah but yeah this drop tower has been down all day the log flume was down the rapids ride was down uh mind bender was down since we've been here uh blue hawk was down That's a lot of rides, to be, like major rides to be down, but yeah, that's what you expect, I guess. Even like the little smaller rides were down. Yeah, a lot of the smaller flat rides were down. Like the cowboy one was down for like a little bit. Yeah. So what was your favorite coaster that you did here today? I would say this is my favorite. Yeah, Twisted Cyclone. Yeah, I'd say between Twisted Cyclone and Goliath, I would I would tie them. I think um, neither of them are the best of those two types of coasters I've done. I, I would say uh, Nitro at Great Adventure is better than Goliath, and I would say that all the other RMCs that I did are better than Twisted Cyclone, but that's not to say they aren't good coasters, because they are, it's just... So, I mean, you do have good coasters here, and you got good dark rides here, so, like, the... The ride lineup is good. It's just that there's a lot of strange quirks that I think you should be prepared for if you come here. Like for the main thing obviously is that there's gonna probably be rides that are down. And yeah, there's things that are weird like the fact that you like they put the lap bars down for you. That's kind of a detrimental thing because you don't get any airtime when <laughs> it's like these two coasters would have great airtime if they didn't push the lap bars down so tight. Yeah, so I think we're picking a good time to get out of here because the sky is looking a little dark over there. And also, we want to hit up some roadside attractions on our way up the hill in Georgia. So maybe we'll be able to get to those in time. I kind of wanted to go to that um, Cabbage Patch Kids thing. <laughs> Just because it's like a classic thing from the 80s and it's like, that's probably not going to be there forever, like... <laughs> It's kind of weird, right? Like, it's a weird amusement park. I feel like the North Ride, like, it's really good, but it's so, like, out of place. Yeah, it feels like it should be at, uh, like, Bush Garden. It should be, like, at a bigger theme park, like, not here. Yeah. But, yeah, I do like the park. I'm not saying that the, it's not a good park. Compared to like a lot of the other Six Flags park, I, parks, I think this is one of the better ones, but um, yeah, I just can't get over the ride closures and uh, I don't know, like another thing about like the lap bar thing is like they're, they act kind of like strict about it and it's like, that's not normal. Like most parks you can put your own lap bar down and like, it, you know what I mean? Like I just don't like having it so tight that I don't get any air time or... It's like every every coaster we did, it was way too tight because they pushed down too far. I think if you're gonna come down south, like, if you're gonna come for an amusement park, then you should, like, if you're gonna go anywhere down south for an amusement park, then you should definitely go to Dollywood. 
Yeah, Dollywood is is the best theme park outside of Orlando. I will say that. And yeah, I mean this, but if you wanted to do both of these parks, they're not that far from each other. Like Dollywood's probably like four hours north of here. Maybe not even quite that much, like three hours or something. And then, yeah, there is Lake Winnie between the two, which like we skipped last night because it was like, they were calling for rain and it was already, what, like four, like almost four o'clock by the time we got out of uh, Rock, Rock City, so. I think just the wooded coaster here, like, I'll, going to Lake Winnie, like paying all that money to Lake Winnie. Yeah, if you, want, if you want a classic wooden coaster, they got it here. You don't even need to go to Lake Winnie. Like, over the water. Yeah, uh, Great American Scream Machine is a pretty decent wooden coaster, classic wooden coaster. Long. Yeah, yeah. I like the fat. I like the uh, part of on that where it goes over the water, and I like the part on Goliath where you go over the water. That's like the coolest parts of those two coasters. But uh, I would say uh, Twisted Cyclone and Goliath are definitely the best rides here. All right, now we're gonna head north. We're going up to uh, Helen, Georgia. It's like a mountain town it's like themed to uh, germany and then they got like some attractions and stuff we're gonna hit up uh some stuff on the way up there so we'll see you on the road at six flags over georgia entertainment and history are combined into a fast moving world of enjoyment day or night a visit to six flags in the great state of georgia is an outstanding experience to cherish and remember Flags over Georgia. Six flags over Georgia. I heard by word of mouth, it's the thrill capital of the South. Six flags over Georgia. Monster Mansion, Twisted Cyclone, Acrophobia. 